Good afternoon, Scott Redley, T3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. So we came in today, futures were up a little bit. We weren't sure if we'd get some type of bounce. You know, volatility picked up last Friday when everyone realized that, you know what, we're not going to get any kind of resolution to this fiscal cliff. Um, Monday, on the abbreviated session, you saw a little bit more selling. So today, when word got out that the president was flying home from Hawaii, that uh, potentially maybe something gets done, probably a Band-Aid version, probably a, a kick the can down the road a little bit further until, you know, some point in, in the first quarter to take care of. But, you know, slowly but surely, market uh, lost some enthusiasm. Some key stocks started to break some momentum levels and some high-level stops that could keep you safe or give you a little entry from a short side uh, started going off. And then, you know, lo and behold, some of the indices followed suit. So let's just go right to the charts to take a chart of uh, just say the spiders. Okay, um, just so everyone could see, you know, if you guys remember, this was the trend that broke from the June 4th low, you know, six, 7% to the downside. Here was that November 16th red dog reversal, your gap up. And then we had a nice methodical move through this downtrend that's been in place since the September highs, pushed above it, and now we came back to it. And, uh, you know, it's definitely a little bit, not say I would say faulty, but it's getting a little concerning. You know, we, we talked today that um, you had 141.94, um, 141.88 is, is a pretty big level, uh, like a floor with the 50-day right there. You know, we, we briefly pushed below it. We did close a little off the lows. So, so I know for me, you know, I do, you know, have a bunch of longs on, a short in the spiders when we pushed below. At first, when we were up a little bit, you know, I added to some spider short just to show you how, you, you know, you trade around your positions. You know, here is where we, you know, opened up, so to speak. And then um, once things started to get a little faulty and it looked as if we were going to fill this gap, it added some. And then I think I, you know, tweeted out some point, uh, you know, early in the day, right around here. I'm like, you know what, I'm covering some of my hedge, you know, just to get back to, you know, get, you know, make a little cash flow to fund some of my longs while the market felt weak. And then, you know, keep some spiders on short just because I do have longs. I think I do have like five or six of them. So anyway, with that said, you know, uh, we talk about high level and low level stops. So one stock that, you know, was on my mind and I didn't really, uh, get involved, but I had in my 1026 note, I'm like, you know what? Retail sales are saying the worst since 2008. What comes into mind is a high valuation, high beta um, momentum play that could lose momentum if a broken area. So right away was Amazon. So Amazon, you know, started weak. They came in to try and save it. It was heavy. And then uh, in the note, we talked about how I think 254, 255 is the momentum level. And if you look at Amazon right here today, you know, it, it broke it with, with some with some uh, velocity, so to speak. So, you know, for those who are trying to play it for a future momentum move, because look where we were near the highs, it was flagging above support. Once momentum levels give way, if that's what you're in it for, you get out. So the reason why it was 255 is here is that low, and then really this was uh, around 254, 57. You know, if the stock was any good, the momentum players or some institutions would have supported it right there, and they didn't. So right here, if you were long this, trying to think if we can get an extra move through the new year, here was your out. If you've been holding this thing just say on a different time frame, just say you got involved on this descending channel because it was showing nice relative strength, November 16th, you know, it blasted off, here's your gap. And if you were trailing it from this area, you know, and, and it had the push through move, maybe it didn't get out here, but I would say any close below this support level, you know, lock in some of those gains because this closed on the dead lows and um, you know this should ignite or pressure the stock some more tomorrow I would watch uh, this pivot of 248.04 if we open up above it guys might even short it if it could trade through if you open up below it maybe it holds the moving average and then comes back to it but overall hopefully you got out of some stock or made some money short here and now you don't really have to worry about what's next you could play the levels and here's a pretty big level and then you know you have another level as these two moving averages right in between so with that said you know that was amazon because of retail you know you put some common sense thoughts together with some technicals and you could either get stopped out with a high level stop or maybe even make some money short and i came in long apple i'm like all right not sure what's going to happen here uh late last week you know on that friday it reversed off the lows i think i got long again like you know 515 516 ish guys on the virtual floor so we take it into the close uh, Monday was up three, four dollars. My rule is when I have overnights, I sell a third or half based on the overnight because you don't really know what the first half an hour complexion is going to be. So you take some of the money off the table and book some 
And then if the market has commitment to that stock, you stay with it, maybe even put on more than you had overnight, which intraday I usually have more than I have overnight because you have more control of your stock. And then if it doesn't and you don't see commitment, you get out of it and then you move on. And I've been treating Apple as a very tactical stock. Everyone's like, why are you day trading Apple? I'm like, why are you holding Apple? Is it giving you reasons to hold it? Not recently, <laughs> not in the past two months. So, you know, anyway, you look at Apple and you will see here ever since, you know, that this high here at, um, you know, 703-ish, whatever that was, 705, this is when it broke and closed below the 21 day. That's when we say we could probably get a move to the 50 day to judge went to the 50 day, gave you a three day move and then closed below it. Uh, a good invitation to get out from there, came down to the 100 day, held a little bit longer down here, came back, retested where it broke from this little micro head and shoulders pattern. Remember this, the left shoulder, head, you know, right shoulder, neckline. And then from here, you know, wound up breaking the 100 day. So it gave you another out. And then from here, you know, just continued pressure all the way down. This was that November 16th reversal that wound up giving us a nice calculated trade. Here is your you know, gap and go. Here was some commitment, went higher, and then look at this three-day move. That was pretty drastic. That was a little scary. It shouldn't have happened that way if you were going to see some continuation to that. And now look where we are. You know, this is where Apple is right now. It's a little scary, guys. Okay? You know, hasn't been able to even break below, you know, above this trend line right here, this lower level trend line. I'm not even talking about the trend line from 703. You know, which comes in right around the high here, which is about 555. You know, I'm talking about a lower level trend line, you know, that, that is still in control. So now with that said, it closed pretty weak. You know, micro point of reference you have here is 51024. Then really, this is the only support you have 501, you know, to 505. This gives way, you know, we could see some more pressure here, guys. So, you know, we've been talking about the elephant in the room, so to speak, which we started talking about it, you know, even before it happened. Like, you know, we were like, okay, during this rally, a lot of guys are talking about the right shoulder here. You know, if that's going to happen, it probably reverses somewhere between 590 and 615 or 620. And it only got to 594 before reversing. So now you look at this, you know, and you look at the, the, the type of uh, support underneath you have here. Um, really looks like th this thing breaks. First point of reference to me is right around 486. And then this gap comes all the way into play down at 440. So at this point, pretty dangerous, guys. You know, I know if you're a short, okay, you know, look, start looking at your chops. If you're one that likes to press lows, you know, it's, it, it can't, there's, it seems like there's no um, appetite for it down here. So when that happens, typically, you know, that's an invitation that you could maybe get a nice juicy short. So at this point, I have no position in Apple and we'll, we'll keep judging it day by day. You know, some guys were talking about Priceline, how that's been weaker. And uh, if you look at Priceline, you know, it, it has. Remember this, you know, wide range bar gap down day? Okay, well right there, you know, that was an invitation saying that, you know what, this upper level, right? First of all, you had a little red dog reversal right here. Remember this red dog reversal? Where after a really nice move, this was the gap from earnings, held a portion of it, methodically moved higher, nice wide range bar, red dog reversal, take off some risk. Then here was a little bit of an outside day where I couldn't break out, close no lows, something faulty, and then pow. And from there, this has controlled it. Now the moving averages are curling over, and now we're in this gap, closing at the lows. So another momentum leader, losing momentum. That's not a great sign. You know, then you go to Google. Google, which has been, you know, methodical at times, right? The last time it became methodical to me was right here when it broke this downtrend. We talked about this right around 675, went to 705, flagged again, held above this 680, went and then now it's been slowly just churning in, but I would just be a little careful here. Um, here is a you know, pretty big support. This is your 21 day moving average at 701.60. Typically, if you're in it for momentum and the 21 day gives way, that's usually a sign for me to stay away from it. You know, so here's your little downtrend. Methodically, this was your, your inflection point after this reversal down here. Remember this reversal, November 16th, gap up, commitment. Here was that power pack. This was a day that it showed relative strength. And that's when I think some of us put on a feeler. Here was your ad. Here was that. That was the, that was like this was the last real time I was involved in Google during this last you know calculated tight trade that expanded, and then I missed this scenario. And now you know, it, it's worth looking here, but I would just be a little careful. And as I look at this a little bit further, you can almost draw this you know trend line from uh, you know from this low 
So if it starts breaking below 701 and the market continues coming down, I would just be a little careful here with Google. You know, it did take back a portion of this earnings day and negated it. Usually you take back, a, you know, more than half. It, it loses some of its power, but just be careful. Um, as far as gold, still doesn't look like it's acting right. This was the line I drew in the sand at, um, I think, morning call this morning, where I said, uh, you know, 162-ish is going to be pretty big resistance. Got there and kind of failed. Still, you know, showing some weakness here. This was the last trend line that broke to the downside after, you know, remember this gap down that got a lot of people actually right here, you know, put a lot of pain on people, which was out of the, out of the blue. Then it was a higher low, and then we broke below this 162 to 164. And, and, you know, here's your little dead cat bounce as of now. So for me, gold's a no trade. You know, guys are talking about, you know, give us a little uh, insight on your gold. You've been talking gold for so long, and you've been pretty accurate on your calls. Back in 2008, it was 800. You said 1,500. Then, you know, in the last few years, even different types of trades. At this point, I don't think gold's acting right. And I think if you're a momentum trader, there's no need to be in there. You know, above 1800, yeah, then you get some momentum, right? Here, you know, if you're a fundamental buyer and you want to buy a pull-in, this isn't so severe. So for me, you know, it's not so severe to buy a pull-in and there's no momentum, so to me, there's no trade. If you're, you know, a hedge fund or a big guy out there and you, and you want to have, and you're fully invested and you want to have 10% in gold and that's your max, have 5% in gold now because you could buy some more cheaper or you could wait till it starts acting better and then you can get to your 10% allocation. But for right now, Gold's very choppy and it's not really showing me much. As far as the banks, you know, Goldman started strong today and then closed weak. Um, so you're not only having divergences from sectors, you're having some divergence, divergences within sectors. And here was the upper end of the range that uh, rejected it. Okay, it's still fine. You still have a nice upper level flag. Here is your breakout point at 120. You know, nice beeline to, to above the highs here. And now it's just consolidating. So I would say if you're still in tier one, stay in only tier one until you see it in motion again. For Bank of America, it actually had a better day. You know, it's been methodically giving you cash flow trades besides a swing trade. This was the last time we were really focusing on it. Here is, you know, your core trade as it went through 995, 10 bucks. You know, here is your additional trade above this flag. Here is another flag, could have given you an additional trade. This was one of the first moves that I did not add to. You know, I added here. I added here, and now here I'm just holding because as it goes higher, it makes it harder to add. But overall, on the weekly chart, it still looks like, you know, you could see at least 12. And I think at some point in 2013, you see 1450-ish. So right there, it's still another 25%. So I think that's okay. As far as our job, you know, it's like sometimes you complain and I hear a lot of misery loves company type of scenarios. But really, this is one of the only jobs in America where you could come in every day and have such open, um, to say open expectations or, or no expectations, and then make eight, 9% in, in, in a stock just because you knew the right tactics. And I know, you know, sperling has been all over rim. Uh, it was in off the charts in the eight and a half dollar range going into earnings. You know, people are like, what are you going to do? I'm like from eight to 14, I probably wouldn't take it. You know, the more risk to own it or just sell some calls, do something with it, whatever. So, you know, after earnings got battered and bruised, so I know sprawling has been trying to buy it back. So I haven't traded a rim in a while, but I'm like, you know, everyone's talking about rim. So rim to me above 11 was a buy because of um, the recent pattern, right? Here is your, you know, your move. The reason why we liked it in off the charts was because of this lower level channel. So right here was when you had your core long. I think we might've even listed it right around here even, you know, and then it had a, a move all the way up to 14, boom. Um, held this area. So I thought, ah, eh, you know what, good for some cash flow. So this was the prior high. This was, um, you know, 1098. Someone in the community, I'm not sure exactly who it was, like, oh, look at RIM, look at the volume. So bought some, sold some quickly around 1130, held some, still have it. It closed 1182, up 8%. You know, 8% in, in a tactical play. Again, you never really know where it's going to go. But if the right trade for you is buy it above, uh, Monday's high and then put a stop in at the low, you just made yourself a nice seven, eight percent. And now we'll see what happens as, you know, tries to play with this gap. It probably needs some commitment. It needs some time. I don't know exactly why it went today, but who knows or who cares. But the, the moral of the story is if you did the right trade, you could have made a lot of money or you could have made some money. But again, this is the career that you're in. Same way with Amazon. If you shorted Amazon at 255 because it was breaking the upper momentum level because you knew retail sales were shy and people 
get a little upset about Amazon's valuation. You didn't know it was going to be down 4%, but the right trade was getting short there, you know, and trying to tactically look for that type of trade. Or if that was your stop, you didn't know that you'd be saving yourself another five bucks, but you didn't have to know if you stopped yourself out in Amazon, you know, right here, when it broke this momentum level, you did the right trade. You got out of the way. You didn't know it was going to go all the way down to 248, but you didn't have to because this was your upper level flag that uh, wound up breaking down and the trade changed. And now it's a different trade and the speed changed. So if you do the right trade, you, you don't have to know that that's going to happen. Okay. You just have to know you do the right trade and you could be pleasantly surprised. So with that said, the more you learn what the right trade is, the more pleasantly surprised you'll be if you use the right tactics with the right trailers, with the right tier system, with the right scenario. You know, when we got involved in Bank of America for the second or third time this year, when it was blasting through 10, did I think to myself it would get to 1160 by the end of the year, up another, you know, 15, 18%, whatever it is, after a nice move that we talked about from $8 and even earlier this year at six? No, but you don't have to know where it's gonna go. You can have an idea and a framework, but if you manage the trade, you know, it'll work out for you, or it, at least it'll be in the best position to work out for you. So the moral of the story is just do the right trade, and then more times than not, you'll get rewarded for it from the, you know, limiting your loss side to letting trades work out for you side. And, and the more times that you say, oh, I sold it too soon, or oh, I covered it too soon, the more you'll use a tier system, the more you'll give things a little bit more space, and the more money you'll take out of trades versus, versus not. Same way if you said to yourself, oh, I should have honored this stop. I didn't honor it. I lost more than I should have. You know, then next time you'll honor your stop and you'll lose less. So the, this whole business and this whole approach is a learning process and it's going to continue. And again, we're into the end of this year. If you didn't have a great 2012, instead of trying to make it in the last week, figure out what you did wrong. Look at your, hopefully you're, you're keeping a journal, you know, to create that little inner voice on your right shoulder. So this way, you, you know, you know the right thing and the wrong thing, because over time, the little voice will tell you what to do if you write it down and you repeat it long enough. So overall, just, you know, take it as it comes. We have three more days left. Market's in a spot where really, you know, it's not that compelling. I don't see any unbelievable setups that I'm like jumping out of my skin to, to look for, to get involved. At this point, I think if you can make a little bit of money and you get pleasantly, pleasantly surprised like you did in RIM today, you know what, take it. Or, or if you got short Amazon or if you even just followed your rules and got out of Apple like I did it, you know, 518 and change just because to me, t you know, breaking above 525 was taken off the table because we couldn't even hold 518. So all these little things have to go on in your head. You have to have this plan put together. So when the day is unraveling, you could execute. And the more times you execute on it, the more times you'll trust it. And the more times you trust it, the more times you know, you'll just make money and save yourself money. So with that said, I hope you had a, <clears throat> a, a great Christmas and a great holiday season. You know, we're coming into New Year's and great time to be with friends and family and just try and enjoy yourself, recharge those batteries because you know, 2013 will be here before we know it. Volume hopefully will come back and there'll be a plenty of opportunities. Have a great night. See you tomorrow morning at the call. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side.